All right, we're mic'd up. Thanks. Yeah. This is Brittany. Brittany's here to help as well. I have my tripod right here. I'm already pretty much set up. But if you wanted to do a little bit, yeah, I'll just stay in pretty close here. No worries. Papers? Yes, please. Yeah, take papers here. I think I don't think that one's it. It'll be Moringa Magic. It'll be that one. Okay. Starting off, Moringa is an ancient herb. It actually is well known in India as an Ayurvedic herb. For over 5,000 years, it has been used medicinally to help treat over 300 known ailments. So good morning, everyone. Thanks so much for joining me today. I'd like to unveil one of nature's most remarkable gifts, Moringa, also known as the miracle tree. And so, as I mentioned, it's been used in Ayurvedic wisdom for thousands of years. And this is an Indian traditional medical practice called Ayurveda. So there's a book in, 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 this, in, in Ayurveda called the Mahabharata. And it has been an oral, orally passed down book for thousands of years. And Moringa was mentioned in that book many, many times. And you might have even heard Moringa in the Bible as well. It's been mentioned in the Bible and many other scholarly and ancient texts. So what makes Moringa so remarkable is that it has a multitude of vitamins and minerals that it can pull up and accumulate from the soil. As long as it's present in the soil, it's going to be present in the leaves. And um, Moringa is said to be one of the most nutritious plants that you can eat on land. So there are other plants that are maybe a little bit more nutritious and have also um, uh, different, different kind of like makeups, you know, just uh, profile, different profile. But um, Moringa for being on land, it's a tree, so it's fungal based. The roots are fungal based and also is well assimilated to our bodies because we are also fungal based beings. The leaves are super packed full of vitamins, minerals, especially A, C, and E. But vitamin C is very sensitive to heat. And so you can accumulate most of the vitamin C in Moringa if you consume it raw. And, and actually, uh, I fasted on Moringa for 30 days, water and Moringa. When I was getting into this business and I wanted to know if this was really true, if it was really real, that's when I went ahead and embarked on that journey to see for myself if this is really what they say it is. And I'll tell you, on the 30th day of that fast, after just drinking water and Moringa tea for 30 days, I walked on my hands across a football field. So it gives you all the energy and, and um, anything that you would need to get to the next level in your healing journey. The reason why I actually use Moringa is because I suffered from IBS for over 13 years. And that's the reason why I got into Moringa myself was to help heal my gut, heal my colon, heal my liver. And that's one of the reasons why I also fasted for those 30 days. And I'll tell you since then, and it's been about 10 years, I haven't had any issues going to the bathroom and it's been really great. So overcoming that childhood, um, just medical condition, um, is really empowering and knowing that it's all really in the herbs and what we eat. So what are the, some of the ways that you can use Moringa? And I have some hot water here and I'll go ahead and um, I'll pour in some, some loose leaf for you all. We'll just open this up here and see just how easy it is just to make some tea. So we have some warm water here and we'll just go ahead and put it right in there. I'm an Aquarian, so I don't really like measure things too much. It's just kind of like a little dab of this, a little dab of that. So, um, so a couple, a couple of uh, tablespoons to a cup, and we'll just kind of let that, let that simmer there. So that's just like the dried. This is the dried leaves, yeah, yeah, just the dried leaves. What temperature that water would be? Because the heat takes. Yeah, so that's why it's good to eat raw. It's good to eat raw. But, you know, we're also enjoying the tea. And another thing that heat does is also make other vitamins and minerals more available as well. So just like when you cook things, sometimes it can be good. But enjoying it in a raw form, say uncooked, but also enjoying it in a tea form is very good too. So tea is one of the most...
popular ways that, that you can drink Moringa as a medicinal, medicinal herb. All right, so we've got tea, extracts. So one of the ways that I like to make extracts is with a mason jar, very simply, and then I'll even take some of the loose leaf. This is just a little, quick little prime example. Just pour some, some uh, loose leaf in a mason jar, and then I'll just fill this up with alcohol. And I use 190 proof organic grapeseed alcohol, and I'll fill this up, and then I'll let that sit for a couple weeks, and I'll just keep spinning it and turning it. And the trick is to keep the leaves completely submerged under the alcohol during those couple of weeks. So you want to get all the leaves and everything underneath the level of alcohol. So if you put alcohol in it, you want to at least make sure that there's enough alcohol to fill above the line. And then I just really just shake it around and I do that for a couple weeks. And that's with the 190 proof organic grapeseed alcohol. And then I strain the leaves away and then you're left with a really thick, dark concentrate that you can dilute up to about five times. And that is much more of something that you can put under the tongue and use as a, as a preservative. It preserves the minerals and, um, and it's very easy to do and you can do it within just a few weeks. And that is a, I do. The reason why we like to use the dry is because there's water in the wet. So when you use the dry, you don't have any of the water in with the alcohol because then it can make it a little bit smelly and it makes it go bad. So if you use raw wet leaves, it will cause the, 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 the mixture to go bad um, faster. You can do it. I've done it before, but I find that to have a longer lasting and a more potent extract is to do it with the dry leaves because there's no moisture in there, there's no water in there, and there's nothing to contaminate that process of extracting the minerals. Now, what's really cool is that I did this to a point one time, I let it sit for so long that I, I strained the alcohol away and the leaves were completely white, completely white. They stripped that 190 proof organic grapeseed alcohol pulled all of the minerals, the chlorophyll, everything, all the green and everything out of the leaves. It was amazing. The tinctures last, the tinctures last forever. That's the thing. It's like as a way to preserve the minerals and the vitamins, um, make the extract. So that way you have something over the winter time. So if you have just a tree or a couple trees, uh, it's very good to make your own products that'll last you through the winter. Because right now we're experiencing a little bit of a shortage because now that the trees and the season have come to an end, it's holiday season, but this is when the buying happens. All the buying is happening right now. But that's when it's tough for us to get a good supply because now our tropical trees are going into dormancy. So one of the things that we do in our business is to make these preservatives and dry the leaves. That way we have a supply all through the winter. So that will also help you too if you're just growing it for yourself or even if you want to start a business. Can you use any other alcohol? Yeah, so usually unflavored, the strongest that you can. Everclear is okay, is really good. I like the 190 proof organic grapeseed alcohol because it tastes really sweet and it's really strong. And, um, it, and it mostly for taste because I don't have to add anything to it. The, 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 the grapeseed alcohol is really sweet. It tastes good. What's that? Uh, I find it at organicalcohol.com. And they make it from the organic uh, wine industry in California. They make it in Washington State. I think they ship all the seeds up from California, and then they press those seeds and make alcohol out of the grape seeds. And yeah. do, you, do you use the, what, a dehydrated or dry elbow juice? Oh, great question. And I, I did forget my, my drying rack, but very simply... Um, Actually, I use a drying rack. I don't really use any machines or any kind of oven. I really am just putting the leaves on a rack to dry. Maybe a screen, maybe a frame, maybe a frame with a screen, right? So um, for the tea, for the loose leaf. So I'll, I'll build a frame. And then I'll just, um, I'll line the frame uh, on the bottom with a screen. Right. 
and then I lay the greens on that screen and I let that dry so that way you can get airflow on both sides. So I do this inside in a dry room. For you, you could do it on a table. You definitely want to do it inside, not in the sun. I don't do any of that in the sun uh, because I want to preserve the nutrients as much as possible. So the dehydrator would be a good thing? It's okay. You can okay. use it. You, absolutely. But for me, the scale that I'm at, I have to dry um, 10, 20, 30 pounds at a time. So for me, a small tabletop dehydrator is already too right. small, right. too out of the question. And even my members that are in the collective that are fulfilling orders for us, they're like, hey, should we just use a dehydrator? And it's like, it's already too small yeah. for getting to a point where you're trying to supply businesses and, and maybe become a supplier or a wholesaler. The tabletop thing is really good just for yourself, but the, the thing is it takes just as much time to just set it out on a table with a fan on it than have it in this, in this drying thing that is just pushing air on it. It's just pushing hot air on it. So the, I, I, I like the low heat, no heat, kind of just open with a fan on it. And I have a room, a walk-in room that I created that is just a dry room. It has dehumidifiers in it um, and it pulls the water yeah, no sun drying or anything like that, right. especially leaving it out overnight because in the morning it's going to be wet. Yes. So you can never really get a full dry off your leaves because it's constantly reabsorbing the water from the, from the, from the atmosphere. Because right. once the water leaves the cells and it becomes a dry product, then it's going to want to pull the water towards it to become whole again. Right. So that's why you always have to keep it kind of closed in. You can see here that I use vacuum seal bags as a way to help with the, the quality of it. So any herb that you dry, usually the law is a year. By a year, it usually diminishes and it lowers its value very quickly after that. So in the law of herb, herbalism, it's usually about a year to two years. This is 500 grams. So that's a, what that look like? The like? on a tree, on a yeah. tree. This is about um, one big tree. Wow. Yeah, this is about one, I say big tree, but it's about, a, you know, a medium sized tree, maybe two to three years old okay. off of one harvest is about this, this right here. So the, the ratio is uh, one, to five. So if you have five pounds of wet leaf in front of you, you're gonna get one pound of dried leaf. And I do a lot of like conversions into kilos, like I mentioned 500 grams, but that's about a pound. A kilo is 2.2 .2 pounds, that's a thousand grams. And I do a little bit of both because in, in, in the weighing it out and the pricing, I like to do 10 grams for my small package, uh, 100 grams for my medium package, and then I do like 500 to 1,000 grams for my large package. But you can also go towards more of like uh, ounces if you'd like. This is kind of like our tea, our tea bags here, very simple tea bags. And then, okay, so we kind of went through a little bit of tea loose leaf, we went to extracts, um, oils. You know what I would really love if you could really help me with? If you could grab the oil machine. In the back? Yeah, in the back of the van. Okay. Thanks, brother. So he's gonna grab my oil machine. I'm gonna show you guys exactly how I make the oil. It's from an auger style uh, machine. We have a commercial machine. Please. How far, how long do you dry your leaves? About a week. Okay. I do about at least five days. You know, the first day I have to get a crisp. You have to get a crisp within the first 24 hours. Otherwise, it's gonna start yellowing, it's gonna start getting hairs on it. For the health of the people consuming your product, you don't wanna have the, the leaves sitting out for more than 24 hours without it starting that drying process. They're gonna turn yellow, they're gonna get moldy, they're gonna get hairs on them, they're gonna get bacteria forming on them, they're gonna possibly turn black. So. The moment that you harvest the, the trees, you have to begin to get them dried. So getting them on the dry, in the dry room, on the dry racks is very important. All right, while he does the oil, do you wanna do capsules really quick? I can show you a little bit. I have my capsule machine. Um, you, I can pass this around. This is kind of just like one of my products for the tea. 
take a picture of the box. I've got other boxes and you can even get a box later from me if you'd like. This is the loose leaf. Take a feel, take a look. I can pass it around. Do you blend those leaves then? So that, that is a chopped tea that I use a sifter. I sift it by hand to get that quality. So pay attention to that, that way of a finished product because once you have your trees and you have dried product, you don't want it to just look like a bunch of, a bunch of leaves. You want to get that nice chop to it. You want to get the, the branches out of it. That's a high premium quality finished product that would be considered something that you can put on the shelf. So it's sifted, not blended like a little. It's sifted and chopped so that way it has that really nice. Plus for tea, it's better to have a chopped tea because it allows the oils to go into the water easier. I do a little bit of both. I guess it depends on the time that I have. Do I have 12 hours to do everything or do I have 20 minutes to do everything? So if I've got 12 hours, which is very rare nowadays, um, I'll sit there and I'll do every little thing like I did at the very beginning of my career. Like I did that, you know. But now that I usually have about 20 minutes until I do the next thing, I'm just, you know, just moving it, getting on the racks. And what I do is I tend to do a little bit more work on the back end. So like, I might have to harvest a hundred trees and then I might have to go put those hundred, you know, trees on the racks to dry that day. So I'll get that done. I got to wash, I got to dry, I got to get all those on the racks. And so on the back end, I spend a little bit more time sifting and cleaning up to get a final product versus in the front end. If you have a little bit more time, you can strip the greens and get the branches cleaned up before you dry. So I guess it really just depends on how much time you have. Sift, just a frame with with the screen, <clears throat> a metal a metal screen. Yeah, I, I made a big one. Yeah, where I'm just just making a big commercial styles. I'm starting to learn how to scale my business from being like a market farmer to much more of like an an industrial agricultural farmer. I started the farmers market in 2015. I've been going to farmers markets since 2015, and that's really been my main stay up until about 2020. I was on a John Kohler video and that blew up. That has like over a million five on it. And that got me $10,000 worth of orders a week. You know, so I didn't even have a chance to go to the farmer's market. I've been just been filling orders online on the website since that video dropped about three years ago. Do you use the branches for anything else? Yeah, actually we make an animal product out of the branches. Do you harvest the whole tree? Do you harvest 30% of the branches? For the animals. So the whole tree is used for the animals. So you chop the whole tree every time. Yeah, for animals. But for people, we really just eat the leaves. I'm saying your growing strategy. You just plant trees, you wait three years, chop them, and dry them, or you just harvest branches and let them grow? Good question. So um, so there's a little bit of a, like, a, like a harvesting schedule, right? So you've got your summer, and then you've got your winter. When you get towards the winter, then you're bringing the trees pretty low. You're bringing them back short. But throughout the summer, you're letting the trees stretch and get bigger. But then as soon as you start dropping the weather, then you start bringing your trees back shorter, shorter and shorter. What's that? Seed? Yeah, so, so you can do in every other year. You can harvest every other year if you want to just get your trees big. If you're in a place that freezes every year, your trees are just going to freeze back to the ground every year, right? So will it grow back then? It will. It will. What's that? I'm in Tampa, so I'm in 9B. I'm in Plant City, just east of Tampa. Great. Look for the new calendar next year. So I just wanted to pull this out for you guys. Hopefully this table is okay. This, oh, wonderful. Look, check this out. This is our oil machine. Thank you, sir. Yeah, this is good. Yeah. Yeah, I just want to show you guys. I'll pull this up here. Thank you. I know that was heavy. This is our commercial oil machine. And what we do to make this medicinal grade oil, this is the reason why we're talking about it here, is because it's very good for the skin, the hair, the nails, cuts and bruises, creaky bones and creaky doors. I use it for everything. I use it on my hair, my face. 
I'm actually 94 years old. <laughs> right? And so uh, we use this machine, and I actually built a contraption over top of this machine. It's like an automatic hopper. It feeds the seeds automatically while I can sit back, watch a movie, and just kind of watch that thing kind of do its thing. Before, I would have to actually sit there and, and literally push the seeds down into the machine, and I, it was a, a, a job. It was a job. At least now, I, have a, a, I built an automatic hopper machine over top of it. It's made out of wood and, 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 and plastic. And um, it just feeds the machine with seeds constantly. So it's been a huge help. I have lots of videos on that on my YouTube channel about how we press the seeds. Just the seeds. Uh, actually, beforehand, would you be willing to grab us some paper? The paper bag, remember, uh, kind of like this with the wings, for paper wings? It's under the table. Under the table. I think it's under the right table. Thanks. Jason and I, we're partners actually in this company together. And so he's um, really a huge help. I do much more of the operations and he's much more of like the, uh, the digital marketing advertising. So we make a really good team. So he's gonna get the paper. And so what, the reason why I wanted to show you the paper is because before I put the seeds in the machine, I actually sift the paper away from the wings. So the wings naturally have uh, paper on them. Everybody can see, there we go. So this is actually the paper and it's a nice little pillow. This is, uh, we have accumulated hundreds of pounds of paper uh, from the wings, from just sifting the wings off of the, off the seeds. That can actually be made into a paper product. So that can be turned into canvas or, um, or clothing or many, many, many textiles. So just having that product set aside can be even purchased in bulk by other makers and creators without letting things go to waste. If I put those wings in the machine, the oil is going to come out a little bit more cloudy. So to help expedite the settling process, I go ahead and sift the wings off the, off the seeds. So you can see all the wings on there. Sure. I sift it. Yeah, I do. I sift it. I just sift them by hand. We have a big, big, big sifter. Okay, and I'm so... Totally, I'm totally joking, but also not any smoke marring there? Yes. Really? Yeah, absolutely. The flowers, um, the leaves, you know, it's, it's going to be harsh. You know, it's not like a flower. It's not like cannabis, like a flower. But you can smoke the flowers of the moringa too. Kind of like a moyen and kind of like a, like a, like an herbal, herbal smoke if you're trying to get off of tobacco or replace tobacco. Absolutely. Yeah. I actually have a, a viral a video went viral. I was like, yeah, you can smoke Moringa and that just blew up. <laughs> okay, so when you're making it, the oil is gonna come out, the machine, it's gonna be really cloudy and it's gonna have all the stuff. It's gonna have the shells. It's gonna have all the parts of the seeds to it. And so when it settles, you can see that this, that this bottom crunch is almost like a butter and I really use that for my body. It's like a body scrub. It's a really good cleanser and a body scrub. This helps, you know, I can put this on my feet. This is used as a body scrub. There's a middle layer there that you can't really see too well because it's kind of cold right now. So the, so the oil kind of got real thick overnight. But that middle layer there, it's really thin. It's almost like a butter and that's much more for your face. So the bottom layer is much more for the body and the buttony. And then the middle layer is much more for the face. It's a little bit more uh, thin. If you use the bottom one on your face, it can, it can cut. It, it, it's, it's really harsh. So the bottom one is really just for the, for the body. Then there's a middle layer there that's really good for the face and butter. You can actually put it on your bread, but it's really strong. You don't, you don't really want to use too much of it because it will move things through really fast. It will. It's a, a natural laxative. And then, of course, the oil at the top is there, and that's what we suck off the top, and then we can bottle very easily. So the whole process takes about two to three weeks from the time that you're pressing to settling, then you're moving it to a new bottle, then you're letting that settle, then you're moving it to another bottle, then you're letting that settle. And then at the end of about two to three weeks, the settling process is left with a nice, clear, beautiful oil. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. You can you can you can mash it with your toes. 
um, and you could do a, um, like a grinder for sure. There is a, there is a hand grinder. Um, but, uh, for the most part, it, it is kind of like necessary for, 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 for business. Sure. Yeah. Uh, in, in that, that was about a hundred seeds in that bag. And then we'll press at least like 50,000 to a hundred thousand seeds just in, in a setting, in a sitting. So we get sacks and sacks of seeds. Thousands, thousands, tens of thousands. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the the ratio is is um, very similar to this as well. It's actually if you have a hundred grams of seeds, you're gonna get about twenty five grams of oil. So it's about 25%. So if you did uh, 10 ounces of seeds, you'd get uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Is that like 2.5 ounces of oil? Right? So it's about a 25% about a ratio. So when you grab a seed, uh, and everybody can do this if you want. I'll go ahead and pass this around and you guys can try for yourself. Go ahead and grab a seed, crack it open. This is where the oil is inside here. And then just press your finger together and look at that. See the oil that just came out of there? You see the oil? So he was not kidding. <laughs> so low tech. So just kind of press and you can see the oil coming right out of there. Oh, yes, yes. So this for sure, the bottom part I do with my body, that's definitely body. The middle one is definitely for the face. That becomes a butter. And the top is, is used for so many different things, the oil itself. Um, so I press, or I should say I blend and grind the seeds and make this capsule right here just out of the seeds. So this is just the ground seeds. So as we know, a seed naturally has antibacterial properties, antifungal properties, antimicrobial. So too much of it can actually kind of clear out the gut a little bit too much, but there's a balance, you know? So having a little bit of a cleanse and, uh, and also consuming some of the seed, the seeds, you can just eat the seed. You can eat the shell if you'd like, you can discard the shell, but the, the trick is, is after you've eaten and crushed up the seed, drink some water, it's going to turn really sweet. And that's what it says in the Bible, is the seed that turns sweet with water. And so if you eat the seed and then drink some water, you're going you're gonna to blow, blow your mind. So this is just the seeds. Yeah, definitely the seeds need to be dried. Everything needs to be dried when you use them, when you use the products or especially when you're making. Okay, great. So we did a little bit of the oil there. We got the machine out there. And then I really just wanted to show you guys this capsule machine because it's a beast. It's been working great. 400. And it works amazing. So we can make thousands and thousands of capsules off of this just within a couple hours. This is a 400 one. I have a 100 one at the, at the table too, but I uh, really just wanted to show you the machine so you can see it firsthand what it's like. Um, it's made from plexiglass and it's got a bunch of different parts to it. And um, wonderful. If there's any questions, we can of course go through any of the questions, Q&A. I'd be happy to answer anything. There's a bit in it's good. Industrial magic butter machine. The magical butter, I do have magical butters. This is just a press for oil. It's an auger style. Yeah. So this is for the oil. 
there's a there's an auger there that spins and it and it Hi, it puts oil. yeah the uh, the magical butter is much more of like a um, like a tank with with a blender with a little blender at the bottom and that whips whips things up I have a couple of those too for like deodorants shampoos and and, and mixing oils those work really well yeah the magical butters work great. Um, okay, so let me look here in our paper, make sure we got everything. So the roots, medicinally, <clears throat> if you eat the roots, it's good to eat them uh, when they're less than a year old because after about a year, they get thick, they'll, they'll get a skin to them, and they begin to accumulate things like cyanide and arsenic in the skin, which is a good thing, you know, because it's helping to protect the roots. It's one of a natural mechanism that roots have is, is to accumulate those types of things so that way other bugs and animals don't eat them. But you can eat Moringa roots and they're very, very medicinal um, when they're less than a year old. You can eat all, everything on there. Everything, yeah. And actually the Moringa tree around the world, these are the names of Moringa around the world. It's also known as the horseradish tree because the root itself can be dried and powdered into a spice that tastes just like horseradish. And that brings me into Another mix that we make, a medicinal mix, this is our Moringa Spice. And I'll, I'll pass this around, take a look at the ingredients on the back. Essentially, it's Moringa green powder with turmeric and a few other ingredients. What do you use? I know, I know it uses medicinal, but what do you use it to address? Like what, what Over 300 of known ailments. <laughs> Um, number one being mucus. And that's really where everything kind of stems back to. Moringa is anti-inflammatory and it helps to relieve the body of mucus. Especially the seed, if you've eaten a seed and it's helping to bring things up, you might feel it, feel some phlegm coming up. It will form, it will help to clear any mucus out of the lungs, out of the blood mostly. Mostly Moringa is for the blood. That's one of the reasons why Dr. Sebi was talking about it because he really just talks about the blood. And that's where I first heard about Moringa was through Dr. Sebi. So it's green, so you know it's really good. It's got iron, it's really dark greens. So it's gonna have a lot of iron and, and chlorophyll. And um, so the leaves have a little bit different medicinal properties than say the seeds. The seeds are, it's kind of like a yin and a yang. Where, you know, the leaves are above ground and the seeds are really kind of like in a dark womb. They're in a womb, you know, they're in a seed pod. So when people ask me, what are the different medicinal properties of the leaves versus the seeds? You just think about where on the plant that this is, this is forming. And it also has a lot, of, lot to do with that in your body. So being out in the light, this is gonna have a lot of vitamin D. It's gonna have a lot of chlorophyll. It's gonna have lighter properties. It might be more for the skin might be more for the hair and much more for kind of like things that are on the surface, you know, maybe lighter conditions, something that might not be as serious. Deeper down in the womb, the seeds are really nurturing, they're, they're dense, they have a lot of magnesium and a lot of... Uh, um, What's the other one? Uh, zinc. These are really, really, really important herb, uh, minerals for the reproductive organs. So when you're eating a seed, you're eating the reproductive organ of the plant. So that is also good for the womb, the prostate. It's helping to cleanse heavy metals. And so you're much more looking into like organs with the seed, using the seed and the, the oils. So if you're rubbing the oils um, intentionally on like certain parts of the body, like kidneys and 
you know, using it as a poultice. You know how you, you've all heard about how like people use castor oil. You can use a mix of the Moringa oil and the Moringa powder together to also be that kind of pooling agent out of the body. So you can put it in your belly button in the night and, and put some tape on that. And that really helps to pull toxins out of the, out of the colon. So the seeds are more like dark, deep rooted things. I'm using the seeds um, to really help with my kidneys and my colon and my liver. I take a couple of these seed capsules every day and I find that they really help with, with my, my weight because it gives me kind of like a dense a density. I'm an air, I'm Aquarius, Aquarius, Gemini. So like I'm air in all three of my signs. So one of the things that really helps me are like dark, dark crystals, healing, earthy, you know, Virgos. I tend to attract Virgos and, um, and that kind of seed for me, I really like to consume the seed because of its, its properties with the womb, with the healing. And so if there's any other, other uh, like medicinal questions, that'd be great because I do have a, a, a little bit of experience with it myself. I'm not a diabetic, but I have had a lot of people come to me about Moringa with diabetes. Um, if you've ever heard of uh, Dr. Carrie Waterman, she's in California and her research with UC Davis of California, California UC Davis, uh, has proven that Moringa is actually helpful with diabetes in either uh, reducing the symptoms of diabetes and also helping to inspire the, the, the pancreas to produce insulin. So Moringa is proven to, to actually inspire the pancreas to um, produce insulin. So that is a new finding that came out within the last couple of years, thanks to Carrie Waterman and her research. We've been able to say that, you know, confidently. So blood for sure, diabetes. So what is diabetes really? Blood sugars, blood pressure, anything having to do with the blood. So if you're suffering from migraines and headaches, this is going to help, especially with the extract. If you just take a couple under the tongue, it's really going to help lighten its, its circulation. So um, impotence or other things associated with the sexual reproductive organs, um, maybe infertility. Those types of things are really, really um, useful when using Moringa. I should say Moringa is very useful in helping to treat those things um, because it is giving you all the vitamins and minerals that you need to really get back to a really healthy state. Do you get the same benefits from a couple, from a couple <clears throat> Right, so of course we know that things are really great consumed raw and you can also cook in oil and cook in, in like coconut oil or even Moringa oil. Like I use Moringa oil as a cooking oil. Uh, it's a little expensive, but I use it because it is um, a, a very strong molecular bond and you can heat to over 200 degrees Celsius and Moringa doesn't burn. Moringa oil is a very high, high heat oil. So you can fry with it and it's very healthy. It's a monosaturated fat as well. So it's also very good for the heart. So cooking Moringa, like I said, you're going to eat it raw at times. You're going to have the capsules, maybe the tea, and maybe even have it even more raw than that, just stripping it right off the tree and eating it in your dishes. But then you're also going to bake it. You're going to put it in your powder, your powder in your breads, and you're going to make biscuits and pancakes with it, and you're going to use it in all, in all ways. Thanks. You guys like the spice? You saw the ingredients on there? It's got some golden seal, some fenugreek, uh, cumin, coriander. Please. Um, have you researched anything about the uh, um, oxalates? On the yeah, I don't think that there are um, to where eating it raw affects you in a, in a way. It's not like a spinach. It's people with like kidney stones. That's right. Get affected by the oxalates. That's the right. Eggs. Yeah, especially I don't think. Especially, yes, especially if consumed raw. And I don't think that Moringa has any of those high levels of oxalates. Really? So you can eat it raw. And that's one of the, the special. Uh, traits to Moringa is that it's very low to little to no oxalates. Right. Sure. 
regulates your blood sugar versus uh, like cinnamon reduces your, your, your blood sugar level. Sure. The, and the blood and the uh, moringa regulates it, right? It, it, it balances it. Yes, correct? it's mostly because of the oxygenation. You know, it's oxygenating. And if you can talk about maybe combining the two, if you know anything about that. Yeah, you know, um, I, I keep things kind of broad and, and, and light. You know, I would say more deeper, deeper research. I would say fine for yourself. I'm an architect by trade. I'm not actually a doctor or anything like that. Um, but, um, you know, I use, it, I use it for myself and can tell right away that the blood flow, the, the headache, uh, the power, the energy, it, it's all coming to the body. How and what is exactly doing? Uh, I know for sure that it's definitely oxygenating. Uh, it's definitely doing something with the mucus that's in the system, you know, the mucus that's in the blood. So it's helping to, it's anti-inflammatory. So it's really helping to really push any, any clogs or any, any kind of like, you know, just old oil. It's getting all the old oil out of the pipes. It's helping to cleanse. It's helping to detox. And do you know the exact mechanism that causes this to regulate your blood sugar? I did, and I know exactly what you're talking about. Um, I just, it, I forget at the moment. Yeah. It just slips my mind right now. Yeah. Yeah, there's definitely some sp special terms, and there's a lot of research. I would say if you want to dig deeper in it, I'm just kind of like your your entry level into it. I have a very, very um, broad knowledge of Moringa going into it deeper, deeper, deeper than that. Um, you know, maybe much more say like Dr. Kerry Waterman or another doctor. There's lots and lots of research on it. Um, I do have a little bit of that information in my book here. This is my book here. So this has a lot of information about it as well. And then I have kind of like a, like a book in a box here. This kind of has some information about Moringa inside here, some of the benefits inside here that I wrote. So there's a few things in there too about what it's doing, the benefits of it. It's mostly because it has so many vitamins and minerals, it's really just building you up, giving you what you're missing. And um, probably your body adjusts because it has exactly. all nutrients. Yeah. Like, oh, I can take care of this blood Exactly, now exactly. It's not an actual mechanism of it, but it's yeah, it's doing something with the pancreas. It's doing something with the insulin levels in the pancreas for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes, please. So I have like a ground powder. I also came a little, a little late. You might have touched on it. No worries. I have no idea what to do with it. You mentioned it's kind of like a castor oil infusion potentially. Yeah, you can make a paste. What is like something more traditional I can Powder? Yeah. Smoothies. I, I, I do that. Yeah, yeah, put it in your smoothies. Um, rice. Put it in your rice, make yourself. You know, there's a book, you, there's a story you guys may have heard of, Green Eggs and Ham. You put the Moringa powder so in that. <laughs> Thank you. Can you set up somewhere for the I'm, I'm just right the there, yeah. Got it. I'll have all my products just right here. Yeah, thanks everybody. Thank you, thank you. So, so it's, it's, it's effectively like however you get it in or on, it doesn't really matter what I do. That's right. Yeah, just do it. Just get is, it in there. Is that the leaves ground? Is that what the powder is? Uh, yes. Do you cultivate your own trees? Or do you yes. Okay. I have a collective, so I use okay. other people's properties. Okay. Hundreds of properties around the country. What's the growing cycle? Like, I have about a dozen in my yard right now. And a couple more in. Great. But... As far as going, I heard, I mean, I read that you yeah. trim them back pretty hard. Or, yeah. But in, in Florida, the winter. In the winter. In the winter here in Florida? Mm -hmm. Because okay, Florida has kind of a reverse growing season. So yes. Even here you do it? Yeah. Okay. I, I read trimming back like half of each branch, or do you bring everything back down to a couple of feet? Or yeah. It just really depends on, on, the, on the weather, the age, kind of what I'm feeling, what I need, what's my supply. Yeah. If I've got 100 orders in the queue, I'm taking all these trees back. I need them. Yeah, and then so, they just go right back. And they just go right back. Yeah. Okay. All right. I yeah, try I to call. Some that are about eight feet tall now. Right, right. Back, right. Back, Every time I go to the farm, I'm just going to go to the branch. Yeah, I have a school. 
be able to bring them up. Sorry? I have a school. Okay. So like my collective is a is a is a platform where where we can we can gather regularly and I can teach all of these things. And of course if you grab my book there's there's more okay, information there. In there. What stuck yeah. out the most to you? Where, where do you sell it on? Um, I have it on my website, Grow okay. Moringa. Grow Moringa. Yeah. Take a look at it. Now. Take a look. There, you can even okay. scan it here. And uh, yeah, I'm happy to answer any of your questions. Really, yeah, it's definitely a grower's guide for us. I have about two acres, but I'm on the east coast. So. Nice. I would love to get your supply. So, yeah. We have a lot of orders coming in, and we need more people to help us get to this level right here. People ask, you know, will you buy my moringa? Will you buy my moringa? I need it like this. Okay. And then I don't buy it. The buyers are already coming in. You would just ship it directly to the buyer. Direct, direct drop ship. Okay. Because yeah. I have about uh, three. Yeah, I made I made powder out of the last we're, batch. We're I got like three quarts. Uh, right the corner. Yeah. So three uh, mason jars of powder. Nice. Powder for the leaves, but I haven't done anything with the seeds yet. So. Yeah, let's hang out. I'm gonna be over by the vendor. I'm gonna get set up with my vending booth, and okay. it's nice Sounds to meet good. you. Yeah. I'm Vince. Vince Kendrick. Kendrick, nice to meet you. Thanks, Vince. Yeah, I'll be by. Cool. Hi, Kendrick. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, I live in Ontario. Nice. Um, so, um, if, if I plant it um, like end of May, yeah. We'll We'll You'll get I a summer get, season. Okay, I will get some of these. There'll be an annual. There'll be something that you replant every year. Yeah, and uh, can I um, put it in a grow tent? Yeah, Yeah. absolutely. Okay, so I can have it all year. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, we have this in the Philippines. It's yes, Malungay. Malungay. Yeah. I have it right here on the back. Yeah, and we uh, cook it with Mongo. You know who the graphic designer was? Yeah, Mongo. Yeah, yeah. I remember it as a child. Designer. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So now I live in Ontario. And wow. We have a farm. Oh, wow. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. What was your name? Socorro. Socorro. Yeah. Nice to meet you, Socorro. Nice to meet you, Kendrick. Kendrick, yeah. Thank so, you. mean like products? It's all today. the same, baby. All the same. Yep. I tell him, like, why aren't you doing buildings? He's like, I'm doing architecture. Yeah. yeah. I'm doing it every day. back yeah. in my place. It's like, I'm doing it. Everything that I do, <laughs> the way that I think, I'm building a community. Architects build community. Literally, exactly. It's a structure of social construct. That's true. Yeah. Very good. I'm Kendrick. Jamal. Jamal, nice to meet you. Thanks. That's awesome. Yeah, I have two moringa trees. Awesome. And I just eat the leaves. Yep. Um, I've dried them once, but I was like, I don't have time for this. Yeah. <laughs> so I just, I just either buy the powder or I, just, you know, I walk by and just sure munch every day. Perfect. Um, we made a full business out of it. Like this is. I had no idea. Like it's nuts. They went to this level. Oh yeah, we're just getting started. It's incredible. I got people calling me for forty tons of moringa a month. That's twenty container ships. I had a guy call me last month. He's like, "Hey, I want forty tons of moringa powder. You got that for me, bud?" Is this for like a Whole Foods? You're like, like, like as a yeah, <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. That's a lot of. It's nuts. That's nuts. And that was just one guy. That's crazy. And a girl, I tell people, like, because of my two trees, I literally broke a branch off of a friend's tree, put it in the ground. Yes. And now it's like this huge tree. Yeah. Yep. And, like, it grows so easy. Yeah. It's wild. How are you doing? Good. Are you representing later? Or? I am. Okay, cool. Right. I'm going to do, uh, I forget the time, maybe like two, but we're going to do business. We're going to talk more about business. Sure Moringa business. What zone are you in? You, I'm in Tampa, so 9B. Oh, nice. Okay, okay we're in 8B, so we, yeah. we're losing it. <laughs> yeah. I lose mine even, too, even in, in Plant City. Well, I've started putting a greenhouse over them to try to keep them as long as Good. possible. And then to get them bigger and bigger. Each year. Yeah, uh, yeah. They grow best in the garden. I see you around, Jamal. Yeah, definitely. Oh, thanks. Definitely. Where do you, where do you go? I'm in Miami. You're in Miami? Yeah. Awesome. So just like.